Hello and welcome back to Galactic Goddess TV. We're here with Clear Coding with Amanda. Hello, Amanda. Hello. So excited to be here. Oh my goodness. Today we're going to do something totally different. We have a little treat for you all. Before we got on, Amanda felt it was important to do some clearing for the collective. Right, Amanda? Yes. Um, so I was just kind of scrolling through through social media and um, found a post um, by Jen McCarty and she is um, a really great person um, that helps with twin flames and being reunited and um, healing twin flames and humanity on um, in the collective and so I love her work and she had posted that this um, meme on Instagram and I thought you know what this is something that everybody needs to hear because it just rang true so much and because I do a lot of healing um for people I just was like oh my gosh this is bigger than just what this post is um much much bigger and so I'm gonna read it to you um and then we'll kind of talk a little bit about it but uh the meme says Ever since I learned how the subconscious mind works, I take mistreatment much more seriously. When people mistreat you, they program worthlessness into your subconscious, which can literally alter the course of your life. Mm. And it just like hit me like a ton of bricks. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes. Cause I'm always finding as an energy healer, I'm always finding new ways of um, releasing stuff and um, just I what I do energy healing is like a rabbit hole <laughs> going down every <laughs> single rabbit hole and I just get so many divine downloads and when I was reading that I thought oh my gosh um because Rod and I put this is amazing because Rod and I were going to get together earlier today but I got super busy um and then when I was available um Rod was busy and so I said let's just do it tonight um but had I had we had met earlier today, I would have never have seen that. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that we just trust our intuition and kind of go with the flow at times. Um, because this really does need to be addressed and talked about. And um, Rada and I have been yawning. Well, since we've been on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> we totally have. Oh, since since you it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was already starting to yawn and it reminded me. But um, so excuse me oh now I'm also like burping so oh, the energy is moving bubbling. so strong <laughs> <laughs> bubbling up honey um so we wanted to do a clearing of worthlessness mm -hmm. we wanted to clear unworthiness we wanted to clear um what else did we want to clear there was one other thing we wanted to clear as well but it all comes together in self-worth and um, when you allow people to treat you in a certain way, um, it's really an insult to your mm -hmm. subconscious because our subconscious is where we function from. Yep. And so when we start feeling like, okay, I know Rod and I, you and I were talking earlier and we're talking about, oh, even like in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so if you have somebody who um, is putting you down all the time, what do you start thinking? You start thinking, oh my gosh, I must be that person. I must not be good enough. I must I must not be like cleaning good enough or, or working good enough or, um, you know, fixing food good enough or whatever mm -hmm. the case is, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's mentally draining and mm -hmm. it wears you down, but your subconscious starts believing it, okay? Yeah. So, and then you start functioning from that space that you're not good enough and you're not worthy. And, uh, and that, you know, there's nothing good about you. There must not be anything good about you because, you know, your partner says there's nothing good about you. So you start to believe it. So mm. we want to remove all of that. Everything that is times a gazillion. We want to run um, who structures, what structures. We want to run the big five energies with that. And I mean, that is. Um, we want to uncreate and destroy at all times to go zillion. So right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys, puppets, and beyond. And you, if you've never heard that before, that is through access consciousness. It's their clearing statement. Um, anybody can say that and do that. Just go to 
theclearingstatement.com and you can use that in every area of your life. So do yourself a favor and, and, and write that down. So, um, Oh, it's so heavy. I'm like, yeah, it is. I'm, gonna like, a, I'm like, I gotta take a breath because it's yeah. like, Oh, the, <laughs> the energy. We felt, it, still, we felt mm, it. I was like, Hmm. Mm. And I'm still processing because as the energy moves through, because I'm an energy transmuter, it goes through me and, uh, and I process it that way. Um, so yawning okay. is normal, you guys. If you yawn. Oh, yes. Yeah. If you listen to this and you're like, I don't know why I'm yawning. I just had a coffee. It's because yawning is a normal part of a release when you're doing energy work. It, mm -hmm. I don't know why. It just do you know why that happens? Well, a lot because you're 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 moving energy throughout your body, and so a lot of times people who yawn, uh, they're not yawning because they're tired. They're yawning because they are picking up on other people's energy, and they're transmuters. So if you yawn a lot, um, you're just transmuting the energy. So I'll give you an example. Uh, years ago, I worked in a daycare, and I would read to the little toddlers or whoever I was taking care of and you know there's probably I don't know between 12 and 15 toddlers and I I couldn't get through like a whole page of a toddler book without yawning and I was uh, I was always thinking like what is wrong with me like why can't I even like read a page without yawning but now just like tonight and I'm thinking oh that's because I was transmuting every single little person's energy that was sitting there mm -hmm. through me at that time mm -hmm. so I was you know because um if you if you're an energy transmuter then that is uh that's our job and that's what we do so if you yawn a lot um it's not usually because you're tired or lack oxygen to the brain like they like to tell you it's because you're an energy transmuter and um and that's your job and that's what that's what you came here to do so so it's very important. And if you do want, if you want more information about that, then please reach out to Rod and I, and we can um, discuss that further because it's so important. Um, so one thing we were thinking about with, um, with all this unworthiness and worthlessness and, and, and the like, we were thinking that there's a template that is kind of, it's like a blank template that um, different individuals um, will place on us so through like mm -hmm. magic or spells or curses or hexes or whatever illusions mm -hmm. Ooh, wow <laughs> a lot different. of illusions <laughs> yeah so everything that is I mean so we so we wanted to release that from the collective okay so we are going to release some more right now so everything yeah. that is we're going to um, release, uh, so who structures, what structures, run the big five energy on that, and everything that, that is, we choose to uncreate, destroy it all, tempt the million, so right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pot, all nine shores, poise, holy, can't be odds. Ooh. Oh my gosh, that was a huge, ginormous shift. So every time, if you've never worked with an energy healer, before or never even heard of an energy healer um we just facilitate uh releasing traumas from the body and it could be from this life past lives whatever but um we're like sponges and we take on other people's emotions and so it's so important for us to be aware of that and and know how to release it so um uh so going back to the clearing statement you can use that on anything and everything uh before you go to bed at night you can say i want to uncreate and destroy everything about today uh and then you say the clearing statement right and wrong good and bad pot and pock all nine shorts boys pubs and beyonds and you just cleared everything it's all the all the judgment mm. all the alignments or the the misalignments or the realignments or whatever um, you're, you're releasing everything. So it doesn't take anything good away. It only releases the bad and the negative that doesn't serve you. So you can do that with your family members. You can do that with, um, uh, with yourself. <laughs> I want to uncreate and destroy everything about myself today. Um, because sometimes we can not always make good decisions. I mean, or not the right ones at that moment. So we just release it. And then guess what? It just, acts as a 
um, clear slate for for the next day. So why not? So mm -hmm. we're just choosing when we do this, we're choosing greater. And um, and so um, okay. um, anyways, we're choosing greater and we're leaving the negativity and everything that we don't need in the past. And we're just asking for it to be uncreated and destroyed. OK, um, uh, so we're talking about the relationship and how that can be, you know, pretty. Um, oh, oh, there's like a little moth in here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh my, oh my gosh, I have never even seen a moth in my house in there. Oh, okay. One just start, just flew in front of my face. Oh. That's so weird. Oh, and it's just yeah. sitting here right by my computer on the wall. Okay. Wow. Hi, little moth. I'll have to look that up and see what a moth means. Um. Anyway, so uh, it came to distract me is what it came to do. There's <laughs> trying to distract. Like, I had this little tiny... You know those little gnats that's so uh -huh. tiny they like they like live in the plants in your house well i had one of those like flying around and i was like what the heck? so i was trying to get that and then all of a sudden the moth came out okay um okay so what else did we want to um what else we want to talk about for um i know in, you and i were talking in, about that in relationships yeah. uh, you know a lot of times people pick a partner they may pass up a good, really good partner because they may very well feel unworthy of it. And mm -hmm. so because they were programmed that, mm -hmm. you know, so, so a lot, that's why a lot of times people pick up partners that have a, are abusive. Oh yeah. Lower vibrational. Lower vibrational. They're not, they're, they're not going to elevate you. They're, they're here to keep you, they're actually here to keep you stuck. They're, yeah. they're actually, um, they're actually the agent Smiths of your life. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and people, it's very subconscious because, you know, had we known we were all so worthy, we would, we would have probably made way different choices Way different choices. In, in our partnerships and looking back after we've done quite a bit of healing, we can look back and go, oh my goodness, what was I thinking? That is mm -hmm. so crazy. You know, and, and you're not even attracted to the same people or or the things you used to be attracted to before um like i think you know women who have had you know maybe some tough abusive child childhood sometimes they get attracted to men who leave them hanging you know mm -hmm. um like if their father left or something and they weren't they didn't have that father then it, you know it's about the self-worth so they pick men that also do the same thing and also men can do that it could be the same with their mother right so it's about self it's about self-worth and feeling worthy and deserving of of really having a partner that is of your divine equality mm. your mm, divine equality because your divine partner will raise your vibration and take you higher and help you um really come through a lot of these entanglements that we've had you know and I think that's that's a real partner because a real partner will stick with you and work things out with you and some people are afraid of partners that are going to do that because maybe they're afraid of being seen mm -hmm. so um or being yeah. held accountable or being yeah being held accountable that's it yes yes mm -hmm. very much well one thing um I was going to share is that you know with my divine counterpart my twin flame and my husband um Adam when we were first, um, I was awakened way before he was. Mm. So he didn't really understand the connection originally. So I went through it by myself for a very long time. And when he finally did understand um, our connection and he was like, um, you know, showing me that unconditional love and that interest in, in growing our relationship. All of a sudden, I had all these feelings of like, oh my gosh, I'm not worthy enough. Like, who would even, why would he even want me? How, why do I even think that I deserve to have someone like that in my life? Mm -hmm. This great person and this great man. And I remember texting him one night and I said, you know, I honestly don't even feel worthy to like, you know, for you to uproot everything and come and be with me. And, you know, I was so scared. And he's like, 
you know, like, why would you, why would you ever say that? He was like, you are so worthy. You're worthy of everything. And I literally was crying because I never, ever had a partner ever tell me that. I never, it was always like what I wasn't good at, what I should be doing, what I Mm. could be doing better. I mean, it's just, I, it's like, I was a really good person, but the partners that I had chosen in the past always made me feel like I wasn't good enough. So, um, so when I finally had, you know, reunited with my divine counterpart and he was like, Oh no, you're so worthy. And he actually saw me like for me, I was just like blown away. And I have never felt so safe, so protected. And before, you know, um, I feel, you know, in other past relationships, I felt like I was protected because I knew that they wouldn't let anything happen to me in their presence, mm-hmm. but I didn't feel safe. Mm. And, you know, and that's a whole different type of intimacy. Yes. So with my divine counterpart, I feel protected and I feel safe. Like I was safe enough to let all my guards down, all my walls, like oh. he knows every, every piece of me inside and out. And he loves mm every single bit of me and he's never wavered and that is like the most amazing feeling ever and I never want that feeling to ever I never want to lose that feeling because it's the most wonderful feeling ever that's so precious that's so beautiful and it's beautiful that you met your fear and you were willing to work through it because that's usually when people split (laughs) you know know they get scared and then they run and then you're like what happened <laughs> yeah well we had a, we had a little bit of a time to to really get to know each other on a deeper level um because we lived in different countries mm. and so we couldn't we weren't just like oh yeah like you know we're we're together i mean we're together but we were in different places and so we really and i'm so thankful i'm so so thankful that we weren't together Mm. I'm so thankful that I got to meet him. You know, we got to like message each other and, yeah. and just really got to know each other and like ask questions. Like, you know, like with partners, you're like, oh, I never want to ask that question because I'm so afraid of what they might say. Uh-huh. Right. But with him, I just like, hey, what do you think about this? And he's like, oh, and he could just be so open with me and I could be open with him. And there was no judgment. There was just no judgment at all. So it was so nice. And he always tells me, you know, um, because I have five children and, um, you know, different, different partners and, um, never felt supported by them, um, fully, fully. Right. Mm. And, um, and he's like, I wish I would have met you like, you know, long time ago. I wish I could have been there to help you with your babies and raise raise your children. And he's like, I would have never have left you. I would have never did any of these things. And I'm just like, Oh, like just to, hear those words Mm -hmm. just really makes me feel it makes me feel valued like Mm -hmm. what I've done in life is valuable and um and he recognizes that Mm -hmm. and isn't afraid to tell me he's not afraid to tell me Mm. that's so beautiful that's so 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 tender it's hard to get to that tender place a lot because people have so many defenses but again the defenses I think are about possibly the self-worth and also, yeah yeah you know mm-hmm. but and also the memory the free-floating memories of um being you know hurt so many times and betrayed it's it's really it can be really challenging to feel open you know um yeah. so i just had an idea um because what i want to do is i have this app on my phone it's called the easy entity app and as we're talking i really just want to get a little bit i want to dig if we just have a couple more minutes and i know mm-hmm. Kind of went over, but I feel like we need to really dig deep into what this, what we're talking about and where it came from. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this app uh, removes dark entities and spirit attachments. So Mm -hmm. I just want to go in and kind of say, okay, what is that? Right. So, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so, okay. So what is it? Um, what, okay. I got to ask the right question. So. I know it's a template. So this is a template. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, uh, so it's not the unworthiness we're asking for. It is the, um, the separation template. (laughs) 
it's it's also oh, a, separation because i was looking at worthlessness so yeah. worthlessness separation oh my gosh right so when you're not with your divine counterpart you feel worthless mm -hmm. you feel mm -hmm. worthless like you you can't move on oh my gosh yeah. okay so okay so those go together so let's just see let's go back and let's just see um where that was affected okay so this is the aspect of consciousness so is it one through five six through ten eleven through fifteen so it just okay so this is sixteen this is dark entity those entities man they really want to keep you away from your beloved <laughs> yeah because yeah. They, because they feed off of your sadness they feed mm -hmm. off heart of actually they i've had to remove some vampiric like entity that was literally feeding off feasting off my heart you know and i'm like excuse me yeah, like you're easy. having a buffet off my heart get mm -hmm. like get off mm -hmm. <laughs> but once yeah. you recognize We're it gonna... you move it you know mm -hmm. exactly but that's the thing they don't want us to recognize them so um so this this app takes the the guesswork out of it so we're gonna find out what type of dark entity this is so one through five six through eleven twelve through sixteen seventeen through twenty one so okay so seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty but this is interesting so it's coming up as an entity as fungus mold or a parasitic worm so which one is it parasitic worm interesting oh creepy yeah isn't that I interesting hate parasites <laughs> <coughs> me too of, of all so, kinds <laughs> mm -hmm, that's really that's really interesting okay so let's just see there's a type of biblical dark entity consciousness so it says yes mm -hmm. so one through yeah. five six through ten six through ten oh okay so six seven eight nine ten so it's ten so ten is the deceiver Mm. came in to deceive us and it came in to deceive us as thinking that we were not worthy enough yeah it's to deceive us and that we weren't worthy of our divine counterparts wow and I, that's a, that's a that's a entire collective thing i feel like so many people are like settling mm -hmm. and not choosing their highest mm -hmm. beloved because they're just like well that's that's not realistic you know mm -hmm. that's not realistic like that i would... know a lot of people that are in that same predicament they're just like yeah. realistic because of the age gap or they're from different countries and they're not attracted to someone from or different or... um parts of different aspects of yeah. society yeah, exactly. maybe, maybe one is affluent and one is maybe not or you yeah. know just like they're 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 always these um really really do like a dualistic well, con contrast they're very, yeah the, right they're very the they're very different they're very different yeah. their backgrounds are different they're um I, you know your true beloved is not going to be exactly like you your true beloved will be different in many ways because they're here to actually about ba you balance something together you know you hold one aspect and they hold another and so you're not meant to be exactly like your beloved and i think a lot of people also are you there they feel like they want familiarity rather mm -hmm. than really really true love well They'd rather have to yeah interesting enough um all of my kids are biracial and um all of my partners have been you know men of color mm -hmm. and um so my divine counterpart is white and mm -hmm. i when everybody when i tell everybody the story when i first came home and really knew what was going on I would have like lunches or dinners with friends or whatever and I would be telling them the story and they're just like oh my gosh like tell me more tell me more and I would just tell them everything and they're just like oh my gosh oh my gosh they're like well let me see a picture and I'm like well hold on let me tell you the story first and then eventually I would say okay you ready to see this story or are you ready to see the picture and they're like yeah and I would show them Adam's picture and they would be like what <laughs> they're like you know they would say Amanda you uh, like this is a white boy i'm like i know and they're like huh like they just could not believe it they're like what? they're like we're not saying anything bad about it they're just like this is something that it's just, it's just different 
it's, it's different for me, different. right? Yeah. yeah. It was it, it was completely shocking. And I'm like, yes. But they they were, when I would tell them the story, they would just be hung on every single word and they just loved it. <laughs> and so when they, but I love to show them the picture afterwards because it was like the shock <laughs> value, like, what? I'm like, what? He's white. You know, it's really funny. Anyway, Adam and I joke about that. But but it's like, I think that's, I really think that's, it's what's kind of, in a way, it's unexpected. It's unexpected. And that is actually what um, helped me to grow into love with him in Mm -hmm. the 3D. Because because that's not my typical choice, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, you and I were talking earlier about, having your divine counterpart and really falling in love with them in the 5d and really feeling that unconditional love. And I remember, um, at night I would go to bed and I'd close my eyes and all of a sudden my divine counterpart would be there Aww. and he would be dressed in a tuxedo with like a bow tie. And Ooh. I would always have a long ball gown on and we would dance. And both of us are not dancers, but he, we would dance and he was always so gentle and I mean, complete gentleman. And I was just like, Oh my gosh, I just love this. Like just feeling like that. Mm. And, um, and it was just amazing. So sometimes, you know, you do have to build that relationship in the 5d. And then I was able to come back to the 3d and build that relationship here because I knew that I knew my soul loved him unconditionally and it allowed me to fall in love with him in the 3d. So, wow. I have a question because you've been on this journey for a long time about, um, you know, when you feel somebody in the 5D, mm-hmm. like, but then you know that they exist here, but then it annoys you because you're not, you're not like with them, you know, <laughs> and you're just like, oh, like, this is driving me crazy. I just don't want to, you know, <laughs> it can be, it can be like that. <laughs> However, um, you will meet that person when you've done the work. Mm-hmm. So every time you heal yourself, you heal them as well because they are half of your soul. So you're not just healing yourself, you're healing. So what I did when I came back, when I found out that, you know, I had a divine counterpart, I literally just went on this huge healing journey and I was Mm -hmm. healing everything, everything. And, um, and I, I didn't stop. I was just like, Oh my gosh. I mean, it was like, I, it, uh, it was almost like water to my soul. Like I just kept kept healing and kept releasing and kept releasing and um and it was amazing and so um he would like message me and say hey are you doing some energy healing because oh gosh like I'm yawning like crazy I'm like oh yeah so sorry I should have told you (laughs) but you know so the things that you feel they feel too there's that telepathic you know um connection there's the energetic connection there's the emotional connection and there's times where he'll reach out to me and say hey are you, is everything okay? Cause like, I'm feeling really sad right now. And I'd be like, Oh yeah. Um, this is what's going on. And he's like, Oh, I can totally feel it. Oh. Right. <laughs> and, um, and so things like that. So if you're not in a, if you're not in union where you're defying counterpart and you're starting to feel like that, you just, you just say, okay, you can ask your body or ask yourself, is it yours or is it someone else's, you know, and give, you know, and just send them unconditional love or you can release it or whatever the case is. But as you heal yourself, so you won't find, you won't meet your divine counterpart until you've done the work. So many people are like, oh, I want to find my divine counterpart. Oh, I want my twin flame. Well, it's easy to say that, but why would you risk bringing in your twin flame when you're both not healed enough? Because then you don't want to ruin that. You don't want to ruin that relationship. You want this to be your forever. And not only that, I have to remind people is we all have divine blueprints. And just because you have a twin flame, doesn't always mean that you're going to unite back in this life, Mm -hmm. in this life. Right. So you don't know what contract, what contract you sign or the blueprint that you have. Like, is this, you know, is this the, like the first waivers, the first wave twin flames. Yeah. We're reuniting this life. Um, uh, because we are the ones to bring forward this message and to bring, um, more twin flames, awaken more twin flames. So there are twin flames that are here now that um, may not, uh, they might meet and, and then this, it causes a huge spiritual awakening for each individual. But if you're not healed, it can take you into the dark night of the soul. And you could literally have a chance meeting just for that so that you can heal all those aspects that you've been holding on to. 
And then when you're in a better place, and that doesn't happen overnight, it takes a while. But when that happens, then you're able to walk into like, oh, okay, now I know why we didn't, you know, we weren't in union for these, you know, the last couple of years or whatever, because it, it's a healing journey. So everybody's situation is completely different. You're not going to find one twin flame that has the exact same story because they're all different. We're so unique in so many ways. And, um, but we all have a big, huge purpose. And if you're not living like your best timeline, if you're still out drinking and, you know, getting drunk and get, uh, smoking cigarettes and like putting, you know, bad things in your body, it's, it, it's when you clean up everything. You clean it, you have to clean up your mind, body, and soul. Um, and when you do that, then that's when your divine counterpart will show up. Mm, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's interesting. Yeah, the, the healing journey is one that is, it, it's so bizarre because there's so many layers to it. And I think because for some of us, we're collapsing a lot of li lifetimes in this lifetime. I, at least I know. I am. I have been. And a lot of people that are on the trajectory, we are because we're ascending. So therefore we have to deal with our past incarnations, you know, and, um, and therefore you'll also get fast tracked into, in, into what, what feel can feel like turbulence, you know, energetically. And a lot is, and I noticed that too, when you have that trajectory, there's a lot put on your plate. It's not just, you know, how you have so much going on. Mm. You're caring for so many. People but don't even know what I go through on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's one thing Adam was like, oh my gosh, Amanda, like you just impress me. And even in the very beginning, he's like, gosh, everything you do, you just impress me. And then when he came <laughs> here to visit me, he was just like, oh my gosh, like if, if I thought I was impressed before, he's like, I'm like a hundred times more impressed now. <laughs> he's like, everything you do, He's like, it's so impressive. Like he was just like in awe. Like he just loves like how I move and, and, um, just how I get everything done. He's just like, honestly, I don't know how you do it. He, you know, he like watches me. He's like, you run in circles, and, <laughs> not run in circles that way, but just run, right. Um, mm -hmm. run circles around people is kind of, you know, what we're talking about. And, um, he's just like, it's amazing that you get so much stuff done in like a day's time and he goes I don't know where you even find the time and I go well I'm a master time bender so. <laughs> you gotta be to do all that <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. but but yeah, but exactly. I do think in general like on when you're on the path so like you know people feel like they have so much on their plates and and also they don't have time for their beloved too mm -hmm. and um oh my goodness I'm gonna sneeze what does that mean <laughs> It could be more energy coming up for sure. Yeah, like, sure. okay, there's a lot. There, okay, there's a lot of people listening here that think mm -hmm. that they don't have time for their beloved. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so like, you know, and I think there's a lot, there is a lot put on the shoulders of those who are on their path because it's, it can, and it's totally different ways. I mean, some people have many multiple ways and some people have, um, like, they just have a lot of work or whatever. Some people are clearing out a lot of lineage stuff mm -hmm. and, it's really we're all doing that it's, well, and it's yeah. just it's layers and i think every like it's it's like the ascension right so it's layers and layers and like oh i cleared that oh well here's this other thing you need to clear and here's this you need to clear and here's that and it's 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 never ending mm -hmm. um but it's all for the highest and best good oh this is what i was gonna say because remember i was like oh i lost my train of thought when you clear one trapped emotion you clear it from 300,000 other people. So just one, so just imagine, you know, the stuff that you're going through, we're all connected. And mm -hmm. so if you do a whole session, just think of what you're doing for yourself, but then also for, you know, 300,000 other people. It's amazing. And then, and then also amazing. your lineage. So your, your lineage yes. up yes. and down is getting the benefit. And mm -hmm. I've seen, I've seen changes in, in my lineage too, because of it, but I've also seen that, you know, certain people that were, that had, I don't know how to explain this, but maybe they just were born with that demon inside of them, you know, mm -hmm. so that the, their demons really activate too, because what you're doing is a threat 
to whatever that demon is connected to as far as controlling the family narrative the the way that it goes you know um like the curses that have been placed all, all of the yuck yuck stuff that's really been placed on the families to cause them to be feeding grounds for these entities um by by perpetual pain and suffering so you have people that are in, incarnated into your family that actually their soul is really aligned to the ne the nefarious how would you say it? the malevolent mm -hmm. i mean they're they're dark souls they're dark souls they're 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 the souls that come to disrupt not in a good way but they come to hold you down because they know that in that lineage there will be people coming in like us clearing things out and they don't want it because their their lineage are the demons and so their lineage feeds off of the pain and the suffering and so they're really like the agents myths that pop up in in your lineage in the lineages too and that's well you you know what's interesting when you're talking about that is um uh, when we're clearing this unworthiness from the collective, the, the, the underlying causes for this unworthiness is unresolved past trauma. So that's the next thing that, that was coming up. Mm, perfect. The, the past trauma. So if we ask, when did this happen? Um, we're not going to get a clear answer with that because it's a collective thing. Um, so this is like an individual type thing, but we're doing this for the collective. So can we ask about the collective? No. So I'm going to skip that one. Um, but what I want to know is like, does it affect um, our system? So it's not affecting our any body parts, but it does affect our system. Um, so I'm going to ask real quick, one through five, six through 10, 11 through 15, six through 20. 21 through, we'll say 30, 31 through 35, 36 through 40, uh, let's see, 41, 42, 43. All right, so this is number 43, which is the, let me see if I can say this, uh, into, uh, oh, I don't know how you say it, Integumentators. Uh, how do you say that? It's I N T E G U M E N T A R Y. Integumentary. Is it integumentary? I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> it's not exactly like that. But it's a, I'm like, what is that? Like, I wish um my phonetics would uh pop in right now, but um, into Intergimentary system. Okay, well, whatever that is. Ooh, Belong belonging cool. to or composed of. Is that what it means? Mm -hmm. Oh, so yeah. Belonging to and what? Belonging to or, com or composed of. Oh, yeah. So, okay, perfect. So, yeah, because we all belong together. We're all composed. Mm -hmm. So, this is a, uh, this is a, you know, this is an everybody product. So it problem I wanted to say. Um, so is this so are any of the chakras affected by this? So I'm getting a no. Uh, um, so why? Let's ask why. So one through five, six through ten, eleven through fifteen. So we have eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So 14 is a cord with a dark entity or spirit entity. Whoa. So just thinking of uh, these, <laughs> these evil dark entities and how they, you know, feed off of us, like you just said. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So let's go to the next one. All right. So everything this is, okay. Everything that this is, um, we are going to choose to uncreate and destroy it all. Okay, we're going to run the, the who structures, what structures, big five energies, and everything that is under God's zone. We're going to choose to uncreate and destroy all terms of God, God's zillion for humanity. So, right or wrong, good or bad, fun or fun. All nice choice points toward every us. Hey, perfect. All right, so now we're going to ask if there's a reason behind all of this. So, there is a reason. So, it's, yeah exactly what i thought the mass mind consciousness program mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, that makes sense, right? Because it's a mass mind consciousness. Yep. It's the consciousness. Yeah. So it's a program. Just like I said, it was a mm-hmm. template that was coming through. So I'm so excited to have confirmation of this. So are there are there symptoms of this? It says, yeah, so one through five. Uh, 6 through 10, 11 through 15, 16 through 20, 21 through 25, 26 through 30, 31 through 35, whoopsies, okay, thir- wait, 30, what did I just say, 30 through 35, yes, and you're never going to guess what 35 is, it's worthlessness, <laughs> so that's what it is, so are there any fail safes. So this is, um, okay. A fail safe. So one through five, six. Oh, wow. So the fail safe. So there's a fail safe they put on us and it says cannot be released in any lifetime. Oh, okay. Cancel clear. Cancel clear. Cancel clear. Cancel clear. Cancel clear. Cancel clear. Exactly. I don't exactly. think so. So we are going to say right now that, um, let's see, this one has its own little thing. So let's see what this, this is pretty long. So it just says, um, so ask which part of consciousness, um, wants to witness or assist the cancellation request process. I call upon source, God consciousness and the council of light beings on earth. And I ask for your assistance to expel the fungus mold or parasitic worm entities from my being and then anybody who's listening to this and beyond uh, I hereby declare all of the identified fungus mold or parasitic worm entities that I'm entangled with on all levels and dimensions in this lifetime past lifetimes and future incarnations be taken to the galactic center to be contained or recycled back to source consciousness. I also clear now any energetic imprints, threads, cords, tethers, or bindings that would keep me stuck in this dark entity pattern patterning and are not in balance and harmony with who I am now and who I want to be in the future. And so it is. So if you guys want, you guys can take a couple minutes to just kind of let this process release through your body you close your eyes and you breathe <sighs> what i like to do is breathe in for four seconds hold for four seconds breathe out for four seconds and then hold for four seconds so um do that a few times and then you wait for your intuitive sign uh knowing that it has been cleared all right so uh so we're going to use muscle testing to determine if the fungus molder parasitic worm entity has been released all right so has it been released and i'm getting a big yes yeah. please um you know check in with yourselves and um see if you are getting the same answer if not please reach out to me and rada and we can help do an individual um, session with you and if we have enough people that are needing um, a session uh rada and i will offer a group session um, so that we can all work on this together. Um, all right. So now I now bring the light essence of who I am back into my body and to every cell of my being. So just breathe that in. Take a couple minutes until you feel like this is all complete. Hmm. All right. So we can ask our the part of our consciousness that witnessed this. And we can ask uh, it to show us the upgraded vision or knowing of ourselves. And uh, now that we've cleared the uh, fungus mold and parasitic entity. All right. So the visualizations are very powerful. And um, if you see dark entities or dark symbolism, such as snakes or dragons, um, we just have to repeat it. Okay, because there could be something else that you're entangled with. Uh, But if you see yourself as a light or a light filling you up or as a vessel for love or anything related to illumination, that is positive and light filled. You are on your way to increasing your light score. Oh, my gosh. You know what we should have did? Um, we should have, we should have asked what the light score was. We can, I can ask. Hold on. <laughs> Let's, uh, so we just want to say thanks and gratitude to the Council of Light uh, Beings on Earth. 
And so we're going to check our light score. So let's check humanity's light score before we did that. And then after, because I love doing that. Okay. So light score. Okay. So the light score prior to doing this entire phone call. Okay. So, oh yeah. So the, it was zero. The consciousness was zero. The light score was zero. So that means it was all dark. That whole, that whole template, that whole program yeah. was dark yeah. 100%. So now after releasing that, um, where are we, where is our light score now? So as the collective, so I think any 100%. Do you get that too, Rada? Let me test. Yes. No. Yes, yes. Is it a hundred percent? It's really strong. I'm surprised. <laughs> like yeah, I, I know. It's like, I I mean, we, we, <laughs> we knew this was going to be like literally so powerful because, um, everything before this call, they were trying to stop this call from coming in. Yes. Like they were trying to stop it. And I was like, Oh, and they kept distracting us with other things. But honestly, this is, this call has been amazing. And, um, I just love how we, um, follow our intuition and uh whatever pops up because we may have a plan or a vision but when things need to be cleared um it it you know our consciousness has a mind of its own and they're yeah. like, well, you may want to do it this way but guess what this is what's the highest and best for everybody so we're going to do this tonight so i'm so thankful and so grateful um that we were able to do this and um this is i mean what else is possible now like how does it get better than this I feel like there's going to be more invitations from the divine to, to pop on every now and then and do some more. Cause it seems to be a collective, you know, there's so many, there's so many templates and programs running through the collective that are so distorted and, you know, but it's okay. You know, one, one at a time, because when just, yeah, one at a time. just, just clearing, even like, even doing like the, the self-worth that's powerful. Yes. It's very powerful. Well, look at how much we had to clear just from that. Yeah. And before we were about we to come on, so we kept yawning and yawning and yawning. And we're like, what's yes. going on? I'm like, I am a night owl. I did not. I, I, I don't get sleepy at all. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, it just oh truly is amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I wanted to pull up the, what the moth symbolizes. And it's about change, transformation, endings, death, and even um, the mystery of the night. But it's also um, it's also about something ending. So that program is ending. And the, yeah, and it's also about tr it's transition with ease. So it's like this ending brings a new beginning, and. Um, transformation it's a it's a it's not like the butterfly but in some ways it it to began as a caterpillar it also goes into a chrysalis so it's about that inner transformation and those are all the signs that um that is so amazing yeah. thank you Rada, for looking that up for me however i just had another download that i i need to clear for the collective everywhere where you have decided or chosen or th it was projected to you that um that you were not worthy so mm -hmm. that's a little different okay um this is that was the uh, the other thing we um the other thing we cleared was more on a, like a spiritual level this is more on a on this level that oh I, yeah I, i'm choosing not to be worthy i'm choosing to believe this um, i'm choosing to accept these projections onto me so um so everything that is um and everywhere where you have judged yourself for not being worthy okay everywhere you've had that judgment for yourself and for others how many times have you said ah oh, how can they got how can they always get all the good stuff how come you know i mean that's coming from a really uh a not so nice energy and so um when you're uh, trying to covet on other people's things because you think it's going to make you happy, it's happiness is, is within. Okay. So everywhere where you haven't chosen to be happy, happy for yourself and happy for others, let everything that is, okay. We're going to choose to uncreate and destroy it all times about zillions of right and wrong, good and bad, pun and pock, all things, choice, belief, hope, love, love.
or where you felt a projection of other people not being happy for you like for really- you. yes oh my gosh yes 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 oh how many people you know are so jealous of you and they're like oh i'm so happy for you but you know that they're not <laughs> no and they're probably going back and putting spells on you right now for- exactly you know how many people i have i have known um that have put spells on me um just for little things like oh like um never to like have enough money to oh. feel like financially supported unbelievable and, um, unbelievable and people that have literally been like jealous of me and I'm always like hey I'm not I'm not that cool of a person like um I don't know why you want to be jealous of me <laughs> um, it's but, your essence um, it's the energy and essence and I think you know it's not these these people are jealous because there's something inside and they don't have yeah. anything inside they're like hollow and empty and they have no feelings and they they're like and you know npcs i think npcs do a lot of black magic <laughs> NP- what's an npc they're like not uh, they're kind of like non human player like they're not like in oh. a game they're not the re- they're like the characters that that you shoot and gotcha. kill like yeah. they're, not, they're not the main character that's for sure and so they're super they're the fillers jealous. they're the fillers yeah they get jealous of making yeah. your energy <laughs> okay well you know um okay so everything that is let's just uncreate and destroy all that times got them right and wrong good and bad pound and pock all nature shorts boys boys and beyond non-play non-playable character that's what it means non-playable character yeah perfect non-playable okay so i just never i never heard that before so player character yeah so we're you know there's um a lot of people here that are characters and uh, they look like real people but (laughs) they're not they Um, I i don't think they have the ability so i actually don't think they have the ability to create in the same way that the main character does that's why they have to steal they have they do have they have to steal in order to create their manifestations because they can't do it on their own they actually can't create i mean they they're they can be really good if they're just like an like what a, you call them non-creators yeah they're non-creators exactly because so they, listen we hmm. are creation we are creator right so then these people are the non-creators and they'll never know what it's like to be a creator and to be connected to creator our divine creator and Mm -hmm. these uh non-creators are um what do you call that uh i don't want to say displaced it's dis uh uh like unattached detached detached no wait what am i saying they are um they're detached they're well they're detached from the detached thank you like, wait like, yeah so they're they're co- they're, co- their coding is really really different but yes. what they do have a lot of is envy and hate and jealousy yes. and they are filled to the brim with that because they also are the ones that are always getting triggered if you say something they're the ones who are like oh you know they just are they like the karens in the world <laughs> they, they are the karens of the world actually they they say that if if this is a matrix if this is a hologram they're placed in the hologram to keep they're actually the keepers of like making sure you don't go outside the lines of the hologram like you you know they they're here mm. to keep you inside and keep you under control and keep your you know they're here to keep you um locked down you know what i mean they yeah. they're the one they're the ones who are trying to implement and and they they always want to argue they always want to fight but they may not sometimes they smile a lot in your face and then they go behind your back and then they're like doing the black magic on you and trying to they want you to have the bare minimum i mean they they're really, really the, like the, they don't the, even want you to have the bare minimum. <laughs> I mean, they don't even want you to have the bare minimum. I mean, like, there's something yeah. quite evil about them, actually. And I, I have never been able to identify them the way that I have, like mm-hmm. in this past year. I think because mm-hmm. they've been they they're very attracted to they're very attracted to you because they want that light. So they'll cozy up to you and be and try to be your bestie or. Um, they, you know, they want to keep track of everything going on in your life. They keep tabs on you. 
they're always gosh. spying on you. I mean, they're just like have sucking no life. Your Facebook, yes, they're sucking your Facebook. They, they suck your everything. Instagram, your TikTok. Your they Snapchat, hack your stuff. Like, I mean, they're obsessed. Oh, like they, they have obsessions, nice. and it's a weird. And they see, you know, like. I think you know what I'm talking about, but they're they would be obsessed with even your partner. Like they well, want they're obsessed in the 3D, the 3D matrix. Yeah. You and I, Rada, are very different. We are obsessed with helping people grow spiritually. And yes. releasing trauma and yes. releasing everything that is holding us back. Cause we yep. you know, is you know, like in school they'll say, you know, no no kid or no student left behind mm-hmm. or like no soul left behind right yes exactly. and so we are cut from a very different walk very different i'm like where did how did these beings get created and what are they doing <laughs> they are the clones and the soul they're from the soul harvesting <laughs> yeah yeah i mean I, i'm pretty sure they just put demons inside of there i mean they're just they they look just like us but they're just They've got a whole demonic thing going on. And you'd never know because they, they usually keep it under wraps. But lately, I think they can't hide it anymore. Like whatever, they used to be able to so yeah. controlled and hiding it. And now they cannot hide it at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have you noticed well, that? Well, they can't. They have to show you. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah, have but- to show you. And because we're awakening and we're getting into our gifts and our talents and our purposes. And so, it, but yeah, there's just no hiding. I all also they they can they also conglomerate together so they all come together. This is where the gang stalking comes from, and all of that's kind of stuff because they they cannot actually seem to access energy in the same way. Like I I'm very curious about how they process energy because it doesn't seem it doesn't seem like they're able to collect it organically. Like we you know we just. We just wake up and we're like connected to the divine and, you know, but I don't think they actually do that. It's almost like they need us to be their battery. And that's what I've got. That's (laughs) true. And, um, I used to always tell people, um, like years ago when, um, I was, I don't ever say I was like vibrating low, but I was vibrating at a much lower frequency. I have vibrated low. Yeah. Yeah, and, I have. <laughs> but what I would tell people is, because they would, you know, people drink or get high or whatever, mm-hmm. and I would just say, oh, I don't drink and I don't do drugs. And um, and I say, I get high off of life. And honestly, I do. Like, I mm-hmm. love to laugh. And that's like the best medicine mm-hmm. you could ever have is getting it with is. people that um, can make you laugh and you're just having a good time because it literally, yep. like, it just fills your soul. And it makes you happy, brings you so much joy, and um, it raises your vibration so high. Yes, I'm so grateful that I can laugh. It's uh, you know, it's it's so good to have a sense of humor, and I think these NPCs, especially with these they people, don't. yeah, especially with these people, <laughs> they laugh don't. About it. we're like, oh my gosh, like that's so funny. It's like it, funny, it not is. funny, but it's yeah. Funny. <laughs> but it is but i can i can seriously laugh like wow you went way out of your way you yeah. you waited like you know two hours for me to go do my sauna stuff and then you were still waiting outside for like wow you are you guys yeah. are just can you say desperate like wow desperate <laughs> desperate 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 so desperate um so i have hold on a second here because there is a card that wants to be read um, for the collective so this is the archangel animal deck by diana cooper Ooh. and so there is a card that wants to come out so um i just got that download and let me see what this is now if this is a moth coming out i'm gonna freak out this would be confirmation <laughs> i don't know if there's a moth in this deck but we're gonna find out here in just a second All right, so we're just thanking all the archangel animals for the best is tonight for the collective. Ooh, ooh, gosh, we're still processing. Uh-huh. All right, this is the last thing we're going to do. Yeah. And because I know, oh, my goodness, hold on a second. Just, okay, all right. So this is interesting. Um, Rada, you and I were just talking about this. So, it's actually the dolphin. Oh. And oh my gosh, this confirmation what we were just talking about. It says live joyfully in the present. 
Mm. It's like so sweet to have that confirmation that, you know, I mean, our whole thing here is to be happy and to choose happiness and to, you know, release all that other stuff. So let me see what, okay, the dolphin. It says about the dolphins. Um, so dolphins originate from, is it Lacume? Lacume? Uh, the ascendant aspect of Sirius and carry the keys and codes of their highest frequency time of Atlantis. Their gift is to pass these into the ocean with joy and lightness so that anyone swimming can receive them. Despite being highly evolved, certain Atlanteans who held the sacred crystal technology that powered that continent caused its downfall. They were given the opportunity to earn redemption by taking dolphin bodies so they could safely store it, the technology, but not use it to mm. watch over them. Some angels of Atlantis took dolphin bodies. All this karma ended in 2012. Now, all the dolphins are wonderful healers. They raise the frequency of people to enable them to restore their own divine, perfect health blueprints. They also bring through the gold ray of Christ at the ninth dimensional frequency to light to light up the waters with higher love and teach echo location the importance of dolphins is <clears throat> excuse me is such that an army of sharks whales rays and turtles protect the sacred information they carry wow so interesting mm -hmm. so the guidance of this card says the wisdom of the dolphin card reminds you that you are a special highly evolved being Throughout your long soul journey, you may, may not have been faultless. No one has, but that is past. You are now a light bearer, carrying sacred ge uh, geometric keys and codes from this and other universes. Dance and play. Do what makes your heart happy. Your task is to lighten up and be joyful and gracious as you spread your wisdom Bring through the gold ray of Christ and you will automatically heal others. Uh, also know that no one is perfect. So keep your heart open with understanding and forgiveness and everything that, uh, that doesn't allow for that. We choose to uncreate and destroy it all. So right or wrong, good and bad, pun and pock, all nice words, please, public and beyond. Ooh. And um, also there's three dolphins in this card. And um, it's the illumination is of the the uh, heart chakra, and uh, you can see like um, DNA strands going up towards the sky because this dolphin's kind of mm -hmm. um, jumping through the air. And then um, there's a twin flame infinity sign in the water. So mm -hmm. lots of codes in here, lots of codes in the water, wow. lots of orbs and lots of stars. I mean, it's just beautiful, beautiful card beautiful card i love that and it's just confirmation confirmation oh. that uh we need to be happy yes 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 no matter what no matter what, no matter what. it's a i really think it's it's a choice now yes oh, um, making that choice because there's a lot of reasons to not be <laughs> and <laughs> there's a lot of reasons to be though you know yeah, so. yeah. it's all perspective and how you look at things exactly exactly it's so beautiful well, thank you so much this was really fun and i really enjoyed it um it's just a beautiful a beautiful offering and i hope you all enjoyed it too let us know what you think drop your comments did you feel anything did you have any thoughts visions um you know sometimes yeah, when we're clearing things can either come up that's leaving you and sometimes things can come down into your consciousness that is yeah download so it's interesting to hear your feedback we'd love to and until next time much love and blessings bye for now